So some time ago I had decided to do a video like this, but ultimately changed my mind and decided against it. And that is uh, basically the idea of using option Greeks uh, derivatives uh, with, with respect to some sort of option pricing model to construct a Taylor series that kind of approximates that, that, that model. And my motivation was originally I used to hang out in places like Reddit, uh, some of the options uh, subreddits, and people would ask questions like if I have uh, an option that's this delta and the stock moves this amount, will the, will the I make or lose such and such and such an amount of money. And people would always say, yes, that's what Delta means. And I'm thinking to myself, not necessarily. But the reason I decided not to make the video back then was that um, either uh, the videos I like to make are either uh, how to solve numerical methods, how to solve basic math problems for physics and engineering uh, via the computer, or the ones that are directly that directly pertain to uh, to trading. I like to have some sort of concrete takeaway. Like about this time last year, I think I did a video about how I adjusted a losing strangle. I think I had a strangle on in the bonds, TLT to be specific, the bond ETF, and the call had gone some thirty dollars in the money, and how I adjusted and 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 hopefully got back to even on that. And in this case, there really isn't such a takeaway, um, nor is there any kind of programming things. The programming we use is just to draw diagrams and actually calculate the higher order Greeks because I'm not about to calculate calculate those derivatives by hand. And I guess if there's a takeaway trading related, it's the Greeks apply uh, more in some areas than others. And to kind of extend them beyond that, that range uh, requires higher, higher order terms, which you probably are not going to have access to anyway. So you might as well just use the full, uh, full Black-Scholes model. And uh, the reason I'm doing this now is this basically came up in a question. Someone asked about um, analysis tools that are built into built into platforms like Tastyworks or Thinkorswim, and uh, they wanted to know how those uh, those actually functioned. And I said they actually use the model. I assume they do. I don't actually have access to their code or talk to anyone about it, but I assume they actually use the models rather than the Greeks. Uh, the common Greeks like Delta and Gamma or whatever, um, it's not always obvious what ranges those apply to or what um, what um, under what circumstances those approximations are valid. So what I'm going to do is basically uh, uh, go over the idea of Taylor series to approximate a function, and we're just going to look at it. I think uh, I think I did a sine wave, and, uh, and then go to the Black-Scholes model, and we're just going to um, see how well we can approximate the model using the Greeks, and then see if we can uh, break that approximation to kind of show uh, where where the simple-minded approach, just basically using delta or theta to uh, estimate the change in price, um, goes goes astray. So. Uh, let's just uh, jump into a notebook and get to it. Okay, so if you've taken a course in calculus, you've probably seen this before. It's the expression for the Taylor series expansion of a function. So um, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to assume that this can be done, um, and it can be for the case of Black-Scholes and this case where we demo with sine of x. Um, that's not always true, but for the sake of this video it is. And also, there are multivariate uh, versions of this, but we're just going to take a one-dimensional case. Uh, and when we talk about Black-Scholes, we'll only uh, talk about one parameter at a time, just for the sake of simplicity. So some function uh, f of x could be approximated in the vicinity of some point a as this expansion, where it's the function evaluated at a, plus in the prime here going to uh, relate, uh, be derivative, so it's first, second, third derivative. So it's the first derivative times x uh, minus a, plus the second derivative over 2 factorial, and then this quadratic term, x minus a squared, and so on. x uh, triple prime, third derivative, and then, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. So um, just as a quick demo here, let's look at the function sine of x. So I've already calculated the first, der uh, der all the derivatives, not all the derivatives, but up to a fifth derivative, just, and I chose sine because the derivatives are pretty straightforward. So first derivative is cosine, second minus sine, and so on. Down here, I've plotted the function with the first uh, Taylor, the first term of the Taylor expansion, the first uh, correction term here, this, this first derivative term uh, turned on. So as we, as we would expect, we get a straight line because this is a linear term. The first derivative of sine is cosine. Cosine at zero is equal to one. So this is just one times uh, x, since we're expanding about a equals, um, you know, a is equal to zero. So we get a straight line uh, through the origin here. 
and as uh, as far as approximating this uh, sine wave goes you know it's not the best obviously because we really miss at these ends here in this small in this kind of immediate area around x equals zero you know it's not that bad and this is the approximation that's used if you've taken like a freshman course in physics and you're talking about pendulums um, they'll often um, use the approximation, approximation sine theta is equal to theta for small, small, angles, th uh, small angles of theta. And that's basically this. This is the reasoning behind it. And plus it transforms the differential equation into something you could solve. So uh, let's turn on the next order correction. Um, this is not going to do anything. So here's the plot with the next order correction, the parabolic term turned on. Uh, so this, but the problem here is the second derivative is equal to sine of x again, minus sine of x and sine of x is zero, zero. So this term kind of goes away. Let's look at the third order correction. Um, now we're starting to get something a little more, um, that actually kind of is beginning to resemble that sine wave. So we're kind of beginning to capture that kind of up and down behavior with the cubic. Um, it kind of works fairly well until we kind of get to these turning points um, where the sine kind of reaches its maximum and then our approximation goes astray. So again, uh, the next order term is not going to contribute to anything because it's going to be a sine. Oops. It's going to be a, um, uh, the derivative is going to be a, a sine again. So that goes to zero. And the last one, which I did here, is what order is this? Fifth order. So we're getting closer and closer, as you see, as we put on more and more terms. Okay, uh, that's cool enough, but what does this have to do with option Greeks? So if you're watching this, you probably already know what the Greeks are. Uh, basically, I might clean this section up before I upload it, but uh, I just did this as a quick quick write-up. If you have some sort of uh, pricing model that gives the price of an option as V, the various derivatives of that are referred to as the Greeks. For example, for example, delta is basically defined as, or is defined as, the derivative of the option price with respect to the current underlying stock price. Gamma is defined as the second derivative of the option price with respect, with respect to stock price, and that is, of course, equal to the first derivative of delta with respect to stock price, and so on. These don't all have Greek letters. The third derivative is called speed, so speed is basically the third derivative of the option price with respect to stock, and, of course, you could take derivatives with respect to other um, other variables that enter into the model. For example, theta is uh, the time derivative of the option price. And there are, of course, higher order derivatives uh, that I don't know if they have names, but I've never uh, never seen them referred to. And of course, there are uh, derivative, derivatives with respect to these other uh, things like risk-free rate would give you rho. Uh, respect to, uh, with respect to sigma would give you the vega, you know, volatility Greeks. For the remainder of this video, we're just going to look at uh, the stock price der derivatives with respect to stock price and time. So, okay, um, I wrote some basic utility functions here, Black-Scholes model. Um, uh, you can find formulas for the Greeks, but uh, especially for the higher order ones uh, like like speed and the fourth derivative, fifth derivative. Um, I haven't really really been able to find anyone who's worked them out, and I'm lazy, so I'm just going to use uh, basically SymPy functions to return these uh, these, these these values. So let's first uh, consider time Greeks. I'm going to look at an underlying uh, underlying stock price that's $100, strike price of 110, uh, risk free rate of 1 percent. I'm going to uh, set time equal to one year and pick, just pick a volatility of 30 um, percent. So, and I'm also going to just use call options for the, this video. Obviously, you could do the same thing for puts. And just plot out the value of that call as a function of time, assuming nothing else changes for that year. So, here we go. This plot here basically just shows you how, if nothing changes, this option will decrease in value until it gets to zero at expiration. Nothing particularly um, earth-shattering here. But if you knew the theta, you could kind of calculate the daily uh, daily change in your option price. So, uh, example, if your theta was, um, I don't know, let's say uh, 50 cents, after one day you'd, you'd lose 50 cents, the next day you'd lose another 50 cents, and, and so on. So let's just plot that out. Let's calculate theta, which I've already done uh, up here. 
uh, this term is actually our theta. And let's just straight line uh, that and see how well that represents our actual uh, Black-Scholes prediction of the, of the option price. So let me just uncomment this, run it, and here we go. And you see, uh, it's not that, not that good over the time span of a year. It's not too bad actually out until, what is this, uh, 0.2, a fifth of a year. So let us uh, make another correction. Let's uh, assume we had the second time Greek, uh, the derivative of theta with respect to time. And let's plug that into our Taylor series formula for the approximation of a function and see what we get. Better. Uh, so we go out to what, almost half a year um, before it kind of starts to deviate. Let us go uh, third and we'll turn on fourth order as well. Now we're pretty damn good. There's a slight de deviation at the end, but on the whole, uh, we have a good approximation. And for the sake of completeness, I actually calculated this out to two more or orders, so let's just do that. So there we go. We get a tiny bit of discrepancy at the end, but overall, it's a good approximation. And if you're thinking to yourself, that's a hell of a lot of work to just, just to get back the Black-Scholes model itself, you are, you are correct. So I guess the uh, I guess the takeaway, if there is one from this video, is that the Greeks are basically a instant, instant instantaneous snapshot. They will tell you how things will change over very tiny uh, tiny movements of, of whatever you're talking about, time, stock price, volatility, and you know things like that. But as like large scale predictions, you, you just use the full model and not uh, not bother with these uh, Taylor Taylor series types type of things. Um, let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's crank up the volatility here. So this is a pretty damn good approximation over all the range except for maybe the last few days. Uh, but we do a ridiculous amount of work to get there. But even this ridiculous amount of work cannot be, may not be enough if we have like a high volatility uh, stock like um, uh, GameStop has been in the news. Very high volatility, very wild. Um, say 500% volatility. How well is our approximation work uh, now? So pretty decent again for the first half, and then it kind of goes astray, but it's still on the whole not too bad because we're capturing maybe three quarters, quarters of a year pretty accurately. Uh, let's go to a thousand percent volatility. So here we are not, uh, not as good. Our model basically predicts uh, nothing ever changes um, throughout the life of the life of the option, and of course it does decay. Um, but again, we're still pretty good for the first uh, first three quarters of a year, and then we just wildly wildly diverge. So let's change this back to uh, where we were, 0.3, and let's wrap up this video with uh, talking about delta. Okay, so the price Greeks, delta, gamma, speed, and so on. So I'm going to sweep the stock price here from 80 to 100 dollars, 120 dollars, excuse me. Again, 30% volatility, time is one year, risk-free rate um, 1%, and uh, strike price of 110. I plot out the call prices and we get something that looks like this. This isn't very, um, this doesn't really uh, change a lot. It looks kind of maybe mildly parabolic. So our Greek should actually do a decent job here. So let's come down and let's look at um, just delta. So I'm going to comment out those higher order terms and then plot the tailors. Oops, I commented out the wrong thing, so I uncommented these and commented out the second order correction. As you can see here, uh, this is our tailor, uh, this is their approximation just using delta, and as you can see, it's not, uh, not spectacularly good. So let us uh, just include the effects of gamma. And gamma pretty much nails it, as you could just see from here. Uh, so I don't really see the point in going to these uh, higher order terms. And just to play around like we did before, I copy, copied the, everything into a new, uh, a new uh, cell down here. Uh, much shorter time horizon here, uh, one month. Uh, I, other, other than that, everything is the same. Uh, here is our call price and our delta approximation. Obviously here now, delta does a very poor uh, job. Uh, and let's include the effects of gamma. 
Still not a great job. Let's uh, include the effects of speed. Better uh, over most of the range, but still kind of misses. And of course, you're going to have to go to these higher order terms to really get a good approximation. And even that, it still kind of misses a bit at the ends. So that's about it. Uh, as I said, there's not much of a takeaway here other than uh, apply the Greeks in the, uh, in the regimes where they're applicable. Uh, if you go outside of them, you're kind of uh, getting into dangerous territory and you never really use them for any sort of complicated analysis. You just plug into the Black-Scholes model. So yeah, I'm not going to bother with an outro and I will uh, just uh, until next time, see you later.